Adobe Acrobat versus UPDF. And no, this is not a fake versus video. I have both of these on the paid plan. So I got UPDF with the AI assistant and I have Adobe Acrobat Studio version. Now that's the highest version of Adobe Acrobat. Now, first things first, if you're looking for basic editing tools, they both have the same features. So if you need to type in, if you need to OCR, if you need to add images, remove images, delete text, I mean, all of that basic things are available on both of these versions, okay? Now, we're gonna get into more complex features from both of these, okay? First off, let's get started with the pricing. So first off, we got UPDF here on the left, which is 30 bucks plus $70 for the AI Assistant. That's yearly, okay? So that's 100 bucks total for the yearly deal on UPDF. And on the right, we have Adobe Acrobat Studio, which is the plan that has the AI feature built into it. It's 300 bucks a year. So that's a big difference price wise. So if you're looking to load in PDFs, do some basic editing and not basic editing, I mean, a bunch of editing features, advanced ones, then I would recommend UPDF in that sense, okay? If you're looking for advanced features, like really niche specific kind of features, you might find them on Adobe Acrobat and not on UPDF. Now, Adobe Acrobat, to be fair, does have a basic plan. The reason I am showing you the studio version is because that's what I have purchased and that's what I'm gonna show you. But they do have a standard plan, which is still more expensive than UPDF when you consider that. So that's 160 bucks plus an additional $60 for the AI assistant. So it's still way more expensive to get the standard plan with the AI than getting a UPDF with the AI assistant. So basically the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and open both of these. Okay, so I got my UPDF on the left and, my, and I got Adobe Acrobat Studio version on the right. Now let's go ahead and load up the same file on both of these. So first off, let's go ahead and get started with UPDF. Let's go into file. Let's go ahead and open up something here. I'm gonna open up the US Constitution. And on the right, I'm also going to do the same. So again, file, I'm going to open up and the US Constitution. All right, so first off, I'm gonna show you the editing features on both of these. Now, if you ask me, I think there's less clunkiness on UPDF. And I think that UPDF has a head start, not to say that they're better, but it has a head start because it practically said, you know what, I'm gonna grab all the ideas from Adobe Acrobat and I'm gonna make a new UI that's easier to understand and figure out. Adobe Acrobat has to work with what it's got and it's got to implement and they got a bunch of features that they gotta all fit inside of this, okay? So editing features, I'm gonna select this constitution right here and I'm gonna go to this section where I have some content. I can go ahead and click on tools here on the top and it's separated by comments, edit, form, and redact. I'm not gonna go through each one of these tools, but I will show you each one of these tabs. So first off, if I go to comment, I can go ahead and comment something in this section. I just go ahead and type in here and I am good to go. I can move this from a different section. I can resize it. I have all my text features available here just by highlighting. I can highlight, I can do a sticky note by commenting. I can do some pencil strikes inside of here, rectangles and some other shapes available here and I have a distance tool, okay? So that's for comments. And then I have the editing feature here, which changes the type of tool styles. Some will repeat and some of them won't, depending on what the tool is. So in this case, for example, if I wanna add an image, go ahead and click here, and I can add another image by just selecting the section here and load it in from the desktop, right? I can also do a link, and I also have filters available here. There's also the form available here. So if I, need, if I need to do some text fields, for example, as a form field, that is pretty cool. I got some check boxes, things that are not available on Adobe Acrobat, okay? So you got all these available tools that are form tools, all right? I can also do redact here. So if I need to redact some sections, so go ahead and redact that so they don't view it. I have to redact the whole page, find text and redact. There's the sanitized document and go ahead and apply in this case. I've only added that one there, okay? So those are the available tools and in, in inside of these, there's a bunch of more tools available, okay? Now on the right, I have Adobe Acrobat. Let me go ahead and resize this. And here we go, okay? So for editing PDF, there's this tab right here. I'm gonna select it and I'm, got, I'm going to get my editing features. 
So when I select this, you can see that if I hover over these, it's sections. And again, if I select this, I can go ahead and type in and edit. And on the left, I have all the available features for the font sizing, padding, etc. Same features as your PDF in that case. So nothing fancy there. And I can go ahead and remove and I can go ahead and select the text right here by adding new text. So I'm going to add text over here I'm going to do so. Here we go. And again, I'll type in here and we're good to go. Again, I can move this, resize it, etc. crop and do all that. To add an image, I can do so by choosing an image or I can generate an image. Now, Adobe Acrobat Studio has this feature where I can generate an image with AI and all I have to do is like describe what the image is going to be and it generates for me four options available for me and I can go ahead and embed it on the page right here, which is pretty cool. I like that feature and also loading from my desktop, which would be normal, all right? Then there's the stylized this PDF, which changes the font and color. That'll open up in the browser version, so it changes. I can use the design tools. So if I select this, it's going to save to cloud and it's going to open up on the desktop. Uh, and it's going to open up on the browser. I don't like that feature because it takes me out of the desktop version. So these are other options that there's available. I can prepare for a form here, so I can create a form from this one. It doesn't let me add elements like you would see on UPDF. It has to create the form and then I can work with the form elements. Okay. So those are the available options. Then I can add comments. So it, you can see that the other one knows like I will select the, the tool that has to do with comments. In this case, it's kind of like unorganized. If you ask me, if you get used to it, it's totally fine. I'm going to add a comment. Let me go ahead and add it here. And I'm just going to say test. And that's a comment that I can go ahead and view later on here in case I need it. So it's a good feature. If you ask me, you can redact selected text. I can redact text. So I'll just say test. Here we go. Post. So I'm just letting them know that it's a comment that they read to redact it with something else. I can insert text. I can add text to comment and I can attach file from here. Then I got my highlights, underline, strike through. There's the drawing. So if I need to draw, just go ahead and draw there. That, all, that is also available on UPDF. There's the type text, cross marks. There's the add signature. That's also available on UPDF. I can save my own signatures and use them. Same thing goes with Adobe Acrobat and I can customize the toolbar. So if I think it's too clunky, if there's tools that I don't need, I can customize that, right? So I could also organize pages. Now, first I'm going to organize pages on UPDF. So we see the difference. Okay. I'm going to organize pages and I totally think that they got this inspired from UPD from Adobe Acrobat. It's, it's so similar. So if I select this, I can go ahead and delete it. I can rotate clockwise, copy, extract or drag and drop to a different section. I can remove it. I can add a new PDF in between if needed. So from a file, from an image, a blank page, from clipboard, etc. All right. Now on Adobe Acrobat, here we go. Let's go to organize pages and I can go ahead and select here. I can drag and drop. There's a, an option here to insert from file, clipboard, scanner, web page, insert a blank page. And as I mentioned, it's, it's so similar in this sense that they got the idea of one from one and another, right? So there's several more options like bookmarks, comments, form fields, attachments that you have on PDF and on Adobe Acrobat, you got options like combining files. That's also available there. Export a PDF. Also several features available for exporting. You have all these export available options on UPDF. Let's go into the export too. And you have all these available options too for exporting. Okay. So pretty much similar in that sense. You can also create a PDF. Same thing goes over there. Translate this PDF. Now that will use the AI feature. You also have that option on UPDF. Send for comments, request for signature, scan OCR, protect a PDF, and you have more options available here. So I don't know why they have all this separated, but you have all these available options and you got some advanced options here that are different from UPDF, which are not commonly used but they are available on Adobe Acrobat. Okay. So you got apply PDF standards, prepare for accessibility add search index, use JavaScript, create custom tool and much more with this tool. Now, both of these have an AI feature. So if I go to AI here, I can go ahead and kick it off. There's the AI feature over here too, where I can go ahead and kick it off. I'll go ahead and refresh it. And I've asked it previously this question. So first off, you can go ahead and summarize like what this is for. And you have questions that is going to suggest for you in case you might need those. 
So in this case, I've asked this question, for example, top 10 articles that empowers citizens. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now, I did this before, but it seems it's removed now. But here we go. So in this case, it got for me the 10 articles and three suggested next questions that I might need. So over here, I got the response and it did this box where I like the distribution of how it sets it here. So Amendment 1 and Amendment 4, so on and so forth. I think that's 9. Yeah, that's a 10 and then minus 1. That's a 9. I think that's Roman numerals, right? And I got the response right here. So I like the way it distributed it. But over here, it's like clear to view. So I think that both AI features are really good. You have options like, for example, summarizing, translating, creating a mind map. You got the option to turn on think, which is going to take longer to give you a response, but it will give you a way better output. OK, you can also add images. You can do screenshots for talking to this AI about this uh, PDF. And on the right, it is limited on the AI feature with Adobe Acrobat when it comes to the chat, unless you load it into a specific section to talk to the PDF. So if I go to create, so for example, I'm going to do PDF spaces. I'm going to create a PDF space and I'm going to open up a file. Same here. I'm going to use that one and it's going to generate it from there. And then I'll get better AI features by loading it in a different section of Adobe Acrobat. I think they should provide that right from the beginning, just like UPDF does. If I need to use the Think feature, if I need to add some images, etc., then I can do it there. In this case, I have to do it this way, and then I can go ahead and chat with it. And then I have AI assistant, analyst, and trainer, instructor, or I can create my own. But now I don't have the PDF here where I can just keep on editing, keep on asking. It just takes me to a whole different section. Yes, it seems it has more features when it comes to AI when doing this, but then I lose the capabilities of just using both. Like I'm going to do it right here. So that's a give or take depending on your use case. So here we go. Those are the main differences for UPDF and Adobe Acrobat. In this case, the studio version, remember? So that's 300 bucks for the studio version, and that's 100 bucks for the UPDF to get both with the AI features. And if you don't need the AI features, then it's going to be only 30 bucks a year here, and it's going to be $155, $156 over here without the AI feature. So it's still way more affordable to use the PDF with AI features, with all the editing things that you're going to need. I mean, there must be a few specific things that would be better on Adobe Acrobat, but that won't be the case for like 99% of us. So I wouldn't pay more to get the features that I'm going to get with UPDF with a lower price. And I think it's way well more organ. And I think it's way more organized on UPDF than with Adobe Acrobat. So consider both of these link provided in the description for both of these. You decide which one you like the most. And please let me know here in the comments if you think I'm wrong, if you think I missed the feature and if you think one of these shines more than the other. And that's a wrap.